Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight, exploratory oil drilling begins in Bahamian waters as opposition continues to mount. Why families are calling for empathy as senators debate legislation governing foreign fishermen in Bahamian waters. Plus, local gaming patrons split on the upcoming taxes on winning. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Topping news tonight, exploratory oil drilling in Bahamian waters beginning today with Bahamas Petroleum Company Chief Executive Officer Simon Potter marking the momentous milestone. This has Attorney General Carl Bethel insist the former PLP government negotiated a deal with BPC that would have likely resulted in Bahamians being shortchanged. Jasmine Brown reports. Senator Mitchell, please take your seat. And, and when the PLP came to office, they stopped with you and cancel no, every FNM no, program no, they could find. Name one. Name Andy, one. Please stay seated. Not one. Senator Mitchell. Not one. Not Senator one. Not one. Mitchell. Not one. Please not one. take your not seat. Not one. Not one. Not one. Not one. Not one. While senators were arguing over the oil drilling issue in the Senate on Monday morning, the company behind the controversial issue revealed that the drilling of the exploratory well Perseverance No. 1 has commenced. In the release, Bahamas Petroleum Company CEO Simon Potter said, This is a momentous milestone for both BPC and the Bahamas and represents the culmination of more than 10 years of work by a team who have remained steadfast in their belief in this project throughout. Potter also said the well will be drilled to the high highest environmental and safety standards over the next 45 to 60 days. BPC's announcement comes amid widespread opposition to oil drilling in the Bahamas by environmentalists. It also comes as members of the government and opposition spar over the matter, as was the case in the Senate on Monday, after Bethel sought to set the record straight on the matter. Bethel insisted the PLP accepted an agreement with miserably low royalties from BPC even after it was advised that the government could get more than double the amount that was agreed upon. The government in 2016 did not change the level of royalty payments and apparently was content to receive between 12 and a half percent, that's the lowest rate you could charge under the previous Petroleum Act, and 25 percent. So between 12 and a half and 25 percent of the value of extracted, of the net value of extracted petroleum. Meantime, the AG insisted they will negotiate a new royalty regime with BPC if commercial quantities of oil are found in Bahamian waters. According to Bethel, in 2014, the Commonwealth Secretariat drew the Christie administration's attention to the low royalty regime it secured with the Bahamas Petroleum Company and was advised it was far below industry standards, which stood around 60 percent. However, Bethel said the deal was renewed without any significant significant change. According to the AG, the difference is millions of dollars. Anytime you, you get a comment. Outrageous. Outrageous. You get out of this. This ain't you. This ain't you. <laughs> 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 oh, rowdy man. You're rowdy man today. Mitchell also insisted that if the government wants to cancel the deal, it can do so. Ask all these businessmen. Thank you very much. Who Thank you. The the FN came to power and I just stopped, I reviewed, and canceled. Stop reviewed and canceled. That, oh, is that, 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 that song and Stop dance was and a canceled. 2007 can, song and dance. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Meanwhile, the families of several foreign fishermen are urging government to reconsider a proposed law that would prevent all non-Bahamians from engaging in commercial fishing in the Bahamas. Jared Higgs has that. I really think it's unfair that <laughs> you don't know what some of these women been through getting their husbands straight to be over here. 16-year-old Giselle Liriano broke down in tears as she described the importance of fishing to her family. Liriano's father is a fisherman from the Dominican Republic and has been married to her mother for 14 years. I have a close relationship with all my family. Um, I have a close relationship with my family in the Dominican Republic. If government's fisheries bill 2020 becomes law, Liriano's father and all other non-citizens would be barred from engaging in commercial fishing. Today, several families affected by the proposed change are speaking out. They include wives and children of non-Bahamian fishermen and some of the fishermen as well. 24-year-old Ashanto Santana says his parents have been married longer than he was born. He's offended by the government's stance. My father took care of seven of us. 
only me here now, but because everybody is awake right now, but seven of us, and he always was there. This is my daddy. Yeah, so I, I applied for my, my citizenship from, from 2003, and I still wait for that. Supporters of the bill insist that it is gender neutral, but Raquel Perez says it doesn't feel that way. She's been married to her Dominican husband for nearly 20 years, and they have two sons. She says she feels like she's being punished for marrying a foreigner and that her family's livelihood is being stripped from them. Who I have to take care of my family? Him. Everything falls on him. So I'm not going to sit back as a bohemian woman and allow this to happen to my family. Yes, and the sea was in, belongs to bohemians. The God made, when he say, he said, let me create the heaven and the earth. He said, it's for all, all men. Former Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist called the bill a slippery slope. Meanwhile, former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram says he's against the bill. In 2018, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis told residents at a town hall meeting in Spanish Wells on another side of the poaching problem was instances of fishermen from the Dominican Republic marrying Bahamian women just for status. They may spend only the, t the fishing season with their so-called wife, after which they return home. But these families insist that isn't the case with them. 13-year-old Fantasia Tate says she's relying heavily on her father as she gets ready to sit her BJCs. The only person that takes care of me and my mommy right now is my daddy. And I just want to know when my daddy go, how will Mr. Pintad, how does Mr. Pintad think we feel? Reporting for Our News, I'm Jared Higgs. Thanks, Jared. Well, Attorney General Carl Bethel is defending the decision to prevent foreign spouses of Bahamians from engaging in commercial fishing. The AG-led debate on the Fisheries Bill 2020 and an amendment to the Immigration Act, both of which were passed in the Senate this afternoon. It has to do with this sacred concept of carving out a space in the Bahamian economy for ordinary Bahamians. Bethel insists it's important to reserve this sacred space for Bahamians. I note that there have been criticisms on the immigration side of this matter. And while that may be so, um, I do believe that it is a bit of, it doesn't quite logically follow that because you wish to preserve an area of the economy for exclusive Bahamian utilization and benefit, that that somehow offends the fundamental principle you have, that there ought to be full marriage equality in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. The Ingram administration implemented a provision in the law for spousal permits allowing all foreign-born spouses of Bahamian men and women to be employed in all sectors of the economy for five years. Thereafter, they would qualify to obtain permanent resident status with the unrestricted right to work followed by citizenship. The AG says this all comes down to gender equality, an issue that he says should be given a second look. The issue of full marriage equality in terms of Husbands, the citizenship of your children, straight along, all of them, there must be at some time absolute equality. If we could only find a way for the PLP not to jam us when we try to do it, and the FNM not to jam the PLP when they try to do it, one day we'll get there. And former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram is hitting out at the government's Fisheries Bill 2020, which has been heavily criticized by some of its own as being discriminatory. The FNM chairman says Ingram is free to say what he wishes. Kyle Joaquin has the story. This administration, there are some in this administration who may share his opinion, there's others who may not. FNM chairman Carl Culmer says it's okay that former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram voiced his opinion on the government's fisheries bill, which seeks to make it illegal for any person who is not a citizen of the Bahamas to engage in commercial fishing or be employed on a commercial fishing vessel for fishing other than sports fishing in Bahamian waters. Ingram calling it pointedly discriminatory in a letter to the editor in Monday's Nassau Guardian saying, I lament the position taken by the government on this matter. The provision excluding spouses of Bahamians from commercial fishing tarnishes the codification of the fisheries law. This offending provision with an obscenely outrageous penalty will overwhelmingly, if not exclusively, have a negative impact upon Bahamian women married to foreign nationals who are engaged in the fishing sector. It will have widespread ripple effects on human rights of persons legally present in the country with an unrestricted right to work. 
In his letter, the former prime minister also pointed to previous FNM governments, which he said put certain provisions and laws in place for the right of non bahamian spouses of all Bahamians, men and women, saying, I am therefore especially disappointed and distressed to learn that the party, likely caving to popular sentiment, stands ready to tarnish the party's distinguished record in support of equality before the law for all our citizens with the introduction of a pointedly discriminatory provision affecting the foreign-born spouses of Bahamian women. The party's chairman not sharing the same view. No, 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 no. It, it, you know, it shows that the FNM is, is, you know, this fisheries bill should have been passed many years ago. Um, and this, this government has had the fortitude and also they have had the, the appetite to, to deal with um, bringing a, such a bill forward to protect um, the fishermen. Is it right? Well, we'll, we'll see how it, how it plays out. Former Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist was the first to speak out on the controversial provision in the House of Assembly last week, which has now gotten the support of Ingram, who said, Peter Turnquist, like a goodly number of others now or recently in the cabinet of the government of the Bahamas, entered frontline politics as captain's picks in the Australian sense. I am satisfied that Peter Turnquist, who, like Dwayne Sands and others whose names I choose not to record, represent our core values and, while no longer around the table, will continue to have their voices heard. For our news, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Thanks, Kyle. Clear skies outside our Robinson Road studios. Greg Thompson is in our weather studio with a look at weather. Hey, Christina. In our first look at weather, we take a look at our current conditions outside our studios. We have partly cloudy skies as the front boundary approaches our area. Temperature in the mid-70s, 75 degrees is our current temperature. Winds are out of the west-northwest at around 12 knots, and your feels like temperature in the mid-70s. Satellite view around the area. We still have that front boundary across the northwest farmers really falling apart. A couple of isolated showers along that, but we do expect this front boundary to move towards the southeast as the night continues. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Thanks, Greg. Still to come on our news, some government services are going digital. We'll tell you which ones. Plus, our Georgia Bain shares a few of her favorite things. That's coming up when our news returns. Just when you thought the air would end drill, Rev came through with Magic and Holiday Chair. Our cash back will double making more spirits rise with chances to spin and with a dope random fries. The rules are quite simple. You can find them online. Just sign up for Trio and pay your rev bill on time. Our grocery store dash is sure to bring smiles as 16 lucky winners tear through the aisles. Call 601-8992 or visit rev.bs slash promotions to find out how you can win with Rev's Field of Magic giveaway. Rev, you and us, together. Web shop patrons are split on that new patron tax. While some say it's not the right time, others agree that the government needs to make up for revenue losses. Jillian Gray reports. As of January 1st, 2021, webshop gamers will have to pay a 5% tax on winnings up to $1,000 and 7.5% on winnings over that amount. It's not exactly sitting well with some patrons, but this webshop customer doesn't think it makes sense complaining, as he says the government will do what it wants to do. No, I don't think at this moment they should do that. They should hold off, but... Uh... The that tax was supposed to roll out this year but was pushed back. Minister of State for Finance Quasi Thompson has said that government revenues are at an historic low because of COVID-19. And the rollout of the tax is one way they are trying to recover revenue losses. They're already taxing the boss. So why tax the small man? Okay? And you're getting tax on everything. You're giving people no leeway. Gaming house operators pay 15% on revenue up to $24 million and 17.5% on revenue over $24 million. This patron, who described Island Luck as her bread and butter, said with the hard economic times many have faced this year, the tax should have been put up for at least another year. Especially in this pandemic, that the government should hold off. Let me wait till 2022. So to come back fresh to the people and say, look, we can give you all the breakers. We had a hard 2020. Mm -hmm. That's my five cents on that. Usually no tax. Power. Mr. DeVoe, who said he games often, agreed with the government's move to tax patrons and doesn't think it will affect his winnings. Well, they said it was going to do it a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, so I was wondering when they was going to do it. Mm -hmm. But um, I have no problem with it. No. I have no problem with it. The government I need to get a little tax on it. I mean... Government making money from the web shops as it is. I personally don't have no problem with it. No, you don't think that's going to affect your ratings? No, no. Okay. 
No, I don't think so. Financial Secretary Marlon Johnson told the NASA Guardian that the tax on winnings could potentially yield up to $15 million through the end of the fiscal year. Reporting for our news, I'm Jillian Gray. Well, as of next year, you won't have to stand on a line to renew your driver's license. State Minister for Finance Kwesi Thompson revealing the renewal process will be going digital after government noticed the smooth transition that happened at the passport office. In the first quarter of next year, at least five additional government services will go online, including renewal of driver's license and the ability to obtain copies of your birth certificates, and marriage certificates. Thompson did not go into detail other than to say other government entities will soon follow suit. He added the Registrar General's Department, Social Services and the Department of Immigration are expected to add more digital components early next year. There's more news on the way, but first, the RF Market Watch. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, the local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. When our news comes back from the break, our Giorgio Bain knows the perfect stocking stuffer. The details coming up. Just when you thought the year would end rare, Rev came through with Magic and Holiday Chair. Our cash back will double making more spirit tries with chances to spin and with a dope random prize. The rules are quite simple. You can find them online. You sign up for Trio and pay your rent bill on time. Our grocery store dash is sure to bring smiles as 16 lucky winners tear through the aisles. Call 601-8992 or visit rev.vs slash promotions to find out how you can win with Rev's Field of Magic giveaway. Rev, you and us, together. This is our news. Welcome back. After the year Bahamians have had due to COVID-19, money has been a little tight for many this Christmas. However, in tonight's edition of A Few of My Favorite Things, Georgie O'Bain shows us one of her faves for those on a budget. If you want to get a few of my favorite things, you'll have to make your way down to Genuinely Bahamian Distillery. Have no idea where that is? Well, it's only the best kept secret. And after surviving COVID-19, it's best we keep every dollar in country. A few of my favorite things are some new treasures on the market. If you've never been to Genuinely Bahamian Distillery on Munnings Road, you're missing out on some of the best rum-infused teas and coffees, jams and jellies, Tortuga rum cakes, and now 100% Bahamian-made crafted rums. What started off as a venture just to make glaze for those delicious Tortuga rum cakes turned into a line of fragrance-based disinfectants due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which brought business to a halt. So you just rub it in. So it doesn't have that strong alcohol mm -hmm. scent. There you go. Mm -hmm. It doesn't smell like the, you know what kind of smell. <laughs> it has a nice fragrance, yeah. something you could, you know, live with and continue walking through. I had a customer that actually sprayed it on him and call it a cologne. But something good did come out of the pandemic for Genuinely Bahamian Distillery. After testing scents for their hand sanitizer, Sands began to create flavors for what would become Luna. We are a craft manufacturer in rum. So what our intent is to pull out all of the bad minerals, the stuff that actually causes the burn. The hearts are then sent over to the lab where the rum flavors of pineapple, coconut, cherry chocolate, banana and raspberry are cooked up. On a small scale, we take the product of the flavor that we're actually looking to capture. We cut it up, dice it up, and we put it in a jar like this, and we fill it with ethanol alcohol. We let it sit. And now we measure it day by day, and we go based on feel, smell, and taste. And speaking of taste. So we on camera. Honest opinion, boom. It is very smooth. It is very smooth. Mm -hmm. There you go. 
Like no absolutely burn. no burn. No burn at all. Wow. That's what I was expecting. I no matter how many times. For the month of December, Luna is only $10 a bottle, making it the perfect stocking stuffer for those loved ones this holiday season. Reporting for R News, I'm Georgie O'Bain. Thanks for that tip, Gio. After the break, how you can help students to stay connected. Stay with us. Just when you thought the year would end rare, Rev came through with Magic and Holiday Chair. Our cash back will double making more spirit tries with chances to spin and with a dope random prize. The rules are quite simple. You can find them online. You sign up for Trio and pay your Rev bill on time. Our grocery store dash is sure to bring smiles as 16 lucky winners tear through the aisles. Call 601-8992 or visit rev.vs slash promotions to find out how you can win with Rev's Field of Magic giveaway. Rev, you and us, together. Welcome back to our news. It's the final stretch before Christmas. Here's Greg back in the weather studio with a look ahead. Greg? Thanks again, Christina. Our second look at weather tonight is being brought to you by Infogro. Satellite view around the area, frontal boundary moving into the northwest Bahamas, falling apart. Most of the energy pulling towards the north and east and away from us. That frontal boundary should move into the central Bahamas later tonight and into tomorrow. Behind that high pressure will be generating some breezy conditions behind the frontal boundary itself. Your boating forecast for the northwest Bahamas tonight through tomorrow. Your winds will be out of the northwest and north. 15 knots, seas running 3 to 5 feet over the ocean. While in the central and southeastern islands, we expect those winds to be out of the southeast to south at 10 to 15 knots. Seas running 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. Your low tide will be at 7.31 tonight. Here's a look now at your national forecast. <laughs> I look now to extend its forecast through Saturday. That's a look at our weather. Make it a great Monday night, everyone. Christina? Thanks, Greg. And companies are joining together to raise nearly half a million dollars to help students stay connected through virtual learning. The Myers Group today joining the Leno Learning Link, Alive, and the Ministry of Education. We started the initiative ourselves with $60,000, um, and we got everybody else on. We started to get other corporate Bahamas on. We are, we, are, we are happy that Alive has assisted. We are happy now that the Myers Group has come on to assist through the POS, <coughs> sorry, through the POS system. And I just want to say thank you all. Participating restaurants in the Myers Group include KFC, Dunkin' Donuts, Burger King, Pizza Hut, Quiznos, and Anthony's Paradise Island. Customers can donate their change towards purchasing tablets for those in need. Marketing Director Ash Henderson says it's a perfect time to give back. As a parent myself, I know how, how challenging it's been for children to learn dis by distance versus being in school. In school. And so we are very grateful and thankful to the Leno Foundation, to Alive and, and to the Ministry for giving us a chance to be part of this great, great program. Uh, we have a unique opportunity touching thousands of Bahamians every day to help solicit donations for these types of programs and we couldn't be happy to be a part of it. Minister of Education Jeffrey Lloyd says he's proud of the initiative so far with only 10,000 tablets left to acquire. And that does it for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Christina Dragovich. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.